What do these pills taste like? <laughs> that is a great question. And I think that is, you know, what everybody thinks they're going to taste their placenta because it's in a in a capsule it, it's just like you're taking any other vitamin so you don't taste you're not going to taste it you don't taste your placenta now there are some people who ask for the placenta powder or placenta chunks and the powder is going to definitely have a I would say an iron taste to it. Hmm. And they use the powder to either for plants, to fertilize plants, or to put in their smoothies. So that's why people would ask for the the powder. And then the chunks are usually used for for smoothies. That's a disgusting word. (laughs) Placenta chunks. All right. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Okay. So moving on from, from those things, how does one know if it's being done properly or it's, what do (laughs) What do I look for in a birth worker and what do I look for in a placenta encapsulation specialist? specialist? <laughs> okay, so those are those are great questions. When it comes to knowing if it's being done correctly, you have to ask. Um, so there are two different ways that placentas can be encapsulated. Um, there's the raw method and then there's the, tra- the traditional Chinese method. The raw method is taking the placenta, um, running some water over it, and going from running water to dehydrating it. That's the that's the raw method. And then the traditional Chinese method is you take the placenta, you examine the placenta to make sure that everything is there, then you cleanse it with with water and then you steam it so the steaming process is important to me which is the which is why i use this method because and that's the main difference between the raw method and the traditional chinese method so when we steam it just like meat we are getting rid of um, bacteria or toxins and steaming it is important because you don't want to put bad bacteria or toxins into your body. So after steaming it, then we dehydrate it. Then we grind it up into the powder form. And from there, we take the, we make the capsules. So you have to ask, you have to just, you know, ask who you are um, choosing to encapsulate your placenta, which method do they use and choose what you feel will be best for your family. A lot, Some birth workers do not offer placenta encapsulation. So with that being said, sometimes you do have a birth worker that is going to be there for your birth. And then you have another birth worker who also does placenta encapsulation who will come and pick up the placenta for you. I think it's also important to ask about the the sterilization or if the person who you have chosen is actually doing it because sometimes people um, will send it to other people. So it's, they're like a middleman. Um, and I do all my placenta encapsulations in a sterilized setting um, in my home that's dedicated to placenta encapsulation. So I do have clients that ask me, "Do you see, are you sending my placenta to something somewhere else? Or what do you do with the leftover placenta? And I use the entire placenta. There's nothing left over and I do not send it out to anybody else to do it. I am the one that's doing it and I take a great honor when I am chosen to do placenta encapsulation for a family because it, it is a it's a it's a beautiful process to be able to help someone in their postpartum 
healing journey in this way. Mm -hmm. The birth worker does a number of things. So a birth worker can do placenta encapsulation. Mm -hmm. A birth worker does massage (laughs) and coaches mom and dad through the birthing process. Mm -hmm. A birth worker also doesn't just jump in when you're in labor. What else does a birth worker do? Yeah, so so we are (laughs) all-encompassing. Anything, you know, that involves preparing. So in the in the prenatal portion, preparing parents to have the birth that they desire. So we do childbirth education. We do newborn education and care to, to prepare parents for once the baby is, is here. We do meal planning. We do postpartum prepping, um, setting up meal trains identifying your support system during your postpartum time. Because a lot of the times moms focus so much on how to get the baby here that they forget about themselves after birth. (laughs) And the baby will be here. The baby, as long as the baby has you, they have everything that they need. But let's take some time to see how the rest of the household is going to run. So we have sibling doulas as well, sibling birth workers as well. And those birth workers are skilled and trained in helping siblings work together and helping siblings understand, you know, the transition that has happened right before their eyes. Yep. Mommy had a baby in her stomach. Baby is here now. This is what day to day will look like. How can you help mommy? You know, so those different, different ideas to, to help siblings. So when it comes to birth workers, we do it all <laughs> to make sure that that mom and the family um, is having having an excellent experience and transition um, into into this new chapter of life. The only thing that we do not do um, is we are not medical experts, so we are non medical. Pro- professionals. And um, with that being said, we, we don't prescribe prescriptions. We don't do cervix checks. We, we don't listen to fetal heart rates and everything of, of that nature. That's not in our, in our scope. That's for a midwife or an OBGYN. Okay. So there is a difference between a midwife and a birth worker. Yes. Yes. And I, we get confused all the time <laughs> with with our roles and responsibilities, but it, it just ultimately boils down to when it comes to being a birth worker, there are only certification programs that we go through. When it comes to being a midwife or um, a, a OBGYN, there's nursing school and medical school that they've attended. So they are the ones that are qualified to answer and to respond in a medical way. We are there to support, educate, and advocate and be the eyes and the ears in the birth space to make sure that the parents' best interests are at heart for um, the the birthing mom and the and the baby. So is a midwife an OBGYN or are those two separate roles. So they they are separate roles because uh, a midwife will have a more holistic approach. A OBGYN will have a, a, a OBGYN will have a more medical approach. But a certified nurse midwife has the the medical experience and will be able to act in an emergency case. Um, but they are just more parent-led and parent-focused versus uh, OBGYN, some OBGYNs, because there are some OBGYNs that are amazing, they're great, and they are focused on what the parent wants. But OBGYNs are trained in a way where they are looking for, for problems and ways to prevent them from happening. Okay. I got it. Would a birth worker ever also be a midwife? So that is a 
great question. Um, a birth worker can be considered a midwife as long as they have gone through the, the proper channels. There are different types of midwives as well. Um, so when you when you talk about midwifery, you have a lay midwife, you have a certified and a certified nurse midwife, and a licensed midwife. Um, and it's it's great that you asked this question because I'm actually in the process of choosing a program to become a certified nurse midwife, which would be able which I would be able to then act in a medical a medical way um, and support mothers um, all the way at, at that point. Okay. Well, that's fun to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in addition to this, your mission is also to equip other people, mm-hmm. not just women, but other people who want to also be birth workers. Yes. Yes. And so I've, I've started along with, um, my my close birth worker that I work very closely with, um, her name is Jessica. Together, we have come up with the birth worker den. So the birth worker den is a a safe space for birth workers to connect, learn, and build community within. The birth worker then will offer programs, mentorship, certifications to become a birth worker and not only become a birth worker, but also establish your niche and your business. Um, so we are going to start accepting students for, for the certification and mentorship program in January. Very cool. How exciting. <laughs> very exciting. Very exciting. Because I, as a as a birth worker, my certification program that I went through was amazing. It was it was um very holistic. So it, it covered everything, but it was the only thing that I felt like the only missing component was it was virtual. Um, so I missed out on that opportunity to to learn in person during the actual class sessions. That's the only thing. Other than that, that program was perfect. So we will be offering a a hybrid solution um, as we meet over over twelve weeks. So we do have that in person connection. Okay. So there will be hybrid, meaning you'll have in person, you'll also have online? Yes. Okay. Because there are folks listening who are from all over the country. Right, right. So is there going to be a fully virtual option as well? Yes. That's that's something that we will consider, not in the initial cohort, but most likely as we continue to grow and expand, um, that, that is a, a portion in the, in the birth worker den that we would like to offer. The mentorship can be virtual or, or in person. Okay. And Bree, you, like I, at this point, am in Florida. We're in Florida. Mm-hmm. And the Wellington that Bree referred to earlier in the conversation is also in Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you're Florida local, then the birth worker den will be available to you sometime in January, both in person and virtually. So if you want to become a birth worker, the birth worker den, Brie is a fantastic human. And well, I brought her on my show as a guest. So naturally, she is at least to my standards. <laughs> so uh, Brie, for anybody who is not in the Florida area, the South Florida area and can't get to West Palm Beach regularly, what do you suggest that they seek out if they want to become a birth worker? So what I would suggest is write down what, who you see yourself being as a birth worker. What are, what are your values? What is important for you to know in this process where you are helping other families through such a 
special and intimate and transformative time in their lives. And once you identify those things in your life, then research your program. um, You know what type of learner you are. Uh, So is in-person important for you? Is virtual important for you in your lifestyle? And then you find a program that matches as closely to that as possible. And you can simply start with a Google search doula programs near me, birth worker programs near me. And I say doula because doula is more recognized Mm -hmm. and you will be able to find more, more programs using that terminology. Um, But we will, we will be expanding. We will. And even um, I've supported families outside of, outside of Florida. So that's something that I definitely see being um, available when, when the, the need does approach to be able to to leave and and have this class um somewhere else so let's talk about cost Mm -hmm. what does it cost to become a birth worker what does it cost to employ a birth worker's services Mm -hmm. and what does it cost for placenta encapsulation and what does it cost for hospital birth Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome questions. So when it comes to finding a a birth worker program, the cost that I am seeing is anywhere in between $900 to about $4,000. So there's a, it's a, it's a wide um, spectrum there. And that just depends on the different offerings. So you will have some programs that just are over the weekend and those are high packed with a lot of information for that weekend session. And then most likely you might have some um, mentorship afterwards. The the programs that are a little bit more around the closer to the 4,000 are longer programs over the span of like 12 weeks. And those are more detailed and oriented around what your needs are and how to how to um, effectively provide and advocate um, support for for the families that you'll be working for we're working with so that's the the cost to become a birth worker when it comes to your return so when you start to work with families um, if you go through the process of becoming credentialed to accept Medicaid right now, the the payout in South Florida for Medicaid and doula coverage is anywhere between nine and twelve hundred dollars, and that's how much you would get compensated for your offering to families. Um, Self pay in Florida right now is ranging anywhere between, depending on what all the birth worker has to offer um, is ranging anywhere between twelve hundred and up to two thousand. So that could be your payout for self pay clients um, or self pay families. That's the that's around the standard. When it comes to what families are expected to pay in the hospital setting out of pocket, it all depends on insurance. Most of the time, um, insurance covers a bulk of the hospital bill, and parents only have to pay the copay, which is sometimes as low as $25 each day you're there, and sometimes as um, on the higher end, $150 each day that you're there. But those are things that will that you will find out after you have established that you are pregnant, that you are going to have a hospital birth, then those are your, your, your insurance company. Once you call, they will let you know how much you're expected to pay. For placenta encapsulation, um, it is $250. That is my, my rate. Um, you have, I've seen as low as $200 and I've seen as high as I want to say on the higher end, three thirty. So I'm I'm kind of right right in the middle there. And for me, um, if you are not 
a client of Birth Your Way, which is my my birth worker um, business, then there is also a, a travel and um, fee in there, which is thirty five dollars. So all together, two eighty five um, for my placenta encapsulation offering. Okay, that's really not bad. When I heard when I was first hearing about placenta encapsulation, I was thinking, oh my goodness, this must be like five hundred dollars. <laughs> so. That's um that's not a suggestion, by the way, Brie, to charge five hundred dollars or any other I'm birth not. worker out there. Oh no. Because babies is expensive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. That and that's that's and that's interesting also because we do when it comes to preparing for, for babies, we do buy all these things that the babies never even use. <laughs> oh goodness. That's that's a whole yeah. different episode. Yes. All right, Brie, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of this information. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you. And thank you for listening. And hey, if you heard anything educational, inspirational, or encouraging today, and you want more people to have the opportunity to hear it as well, please make sure that you subscribe, rate, review, and share. And as always, thank you for your support and for being the change that you want to see in the world. 